Hello, reading friends. I'm going to read to you the book, Amma, Tell Me About Diwali, written by Bhakti Mathur, illustrated by Mashri Somani. It was as if the stars themselves came down to earth that night. The entire city was lit up with thousands and thousands of lights. It was Diwali, the festival of lights, that Klaka had celebrated today. Oh, how much fun it all had been. A most wonderful, beautiful day. He'd woken up full of excitement and wore new clothes with joy. Amma and Daddy had spoiled Klaka so, giving many gifts to their little boy. Friends, uncles, aunts, and cousins streamed in through the day with good wishes and cheer. In the evening, all the children had lit up the house with rows of small earthen oil lamps called diyas. Then together, they offered their prayers for good fortune, prosperity, and health to Ganesha, the god of new beginnings, and to Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth. Ganesha has an elephant's head, and on his feet, his pet mouse rests. He brings good luck, clears obstacles, and is worshipped before any quest. Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, sits on a big lotus flower. She has four hands to bless us with and bestow fortune and power. Then it was time for firecrackers, sparklers making circles of light, wheels spinning wildly, rockets flying high, brightly burning flares. Oh, what a sight. Finally, it was time to sleep, but Klaka still chattered happily. Climbing into bed, he said, Amma, tell me about Diwali. Diwali takes its name from Diaz, said Amma. Just like the ones you lit tonight, it falls in autumn every year on Amavasya, the new moon day and the month's darkest night. Diwali is also very special as it marks for many Indians. The start of a new year, a time to look ahead to new beginnings and pray for fortune and good cheer. But why is Diwali named after Diaz? asked Klaka, as ever as curious as can be. To answer that, said Amma and smiled, I have to tell you about Rama and his story. Rama was a prince of Ayodhya, son of King Dasaratha the Great. He was brave and kind and loved by all. Next in line to be the king of the state. But Kaikeyi, Rama's wicked stepmother, wanted her own son to be king instead. She threw a big tantrum and demanded that Rama be banished for 14 years ahead. Poor King Dasaratha was helpless. For a while, he was sworn to do Kaikeyi's bidding. How could he banish his beloved son Rama for 14 years to a forest most forbidding? But noble Rama knew what he had to do. He consoled Dasaratha, thus while wiping his tears, to uphold a promise made by my great father Gladly will I go to the forest for 14 years. Taking off his crown, Rama left the kingdom at once, with wife Sita and brother Lakshmana by his side. All of Ayodhya came down to bid them farewell. There was not one person there who wasn't teary-eyed. The princess soon made the forest their home and settled down happily in their new life, till Ravana 
the ten-headed demon king of Lanka, hearing of Sita's beauty, decided to make her his wife. Evil Ravana kidnapped Sita from their home. One day, while Rama and Lakshmana were away, shocked to find Sita gone upon their return, looked everywhere in utter dismay. Their search brought them to Kishkinda, where they met the mighty Hanuman. Saddened to hear of Sita's kidnapping, he promised the help of his monkey clan. And thus, an army of mo mighty monkey warriors was raised in support of Rama's quest. Onwards, they marched to Lanka unafraid. Till Sita was rescued, they swore not to rest. On reaching Lanka, they faced the demon army and fought a more fearsome war. People say that such a great battle has never been fought before. Finally, Rama and Ravana came face to face in a fight that was fierce and heated. Rama emerged victorious in the end. Evil Ravana and his army were defeated. Sita was released and reunited with Rama. The loving couple were together at last. It was also the end of 14 years, and so the term of Rama's banishment had passed. Carrying the three on his mighty shoulders, Hanuman flew to Ayodhya that very night. As they neared the city, they were guided by thousands of diyas, giving off a golden light. You see, the people of Ayodhya had not forgotten that the 14 years of Rama's exile had passed. And so, they had lit up diyas across the entire city to welcome the Rama to Ayodhya at last. Since then, on Diwali day, we remember Rama's homecoming by lighting diyas, celebrating the victory of good over evil, and Rama becoming the king of Ayodhya. What a wonderful story, Amma, said Klaka. I will surely light many more diyas next year. Lighting more diyas alone will not do said Amma, as you will learn from this next story, my dear. Goddess Lakshmi comes to earth on this day of Diwali every year to bless Rama's true followers with fortune, prosperity, and cheer. Now, Lakshmi's blessings can bring untold riches, so people got greedy. Money was all they cared about to attract their goddess to their home first. They used bright lights to make it stand out. Year after year, as Lakshmi visited Earth on Diwali, the lights in every house got more and more bright. Till one year, the glare was so bad, it hurt her eyes. And so, Lakshmi decided to turn back for the night. As she turned to leave, at a distance, she saw a flicker of light in the house. Nothing more. Curious, she reached a small cottage and knocked. A lady appeared at the door. The goddess said, I am Lakshmi. Long into the night, I have progress. Tired of all the bright lights in the city. I have come to your cottage. May I rest? The lady invited her in to relax. The goddess found her very kind. Lakshmi said, May I ask you a question? Something has been on my mind. While the whole entire city is glowing with lamps to entice me to their homes tonight, how come your little cottage has only one small light? The, la the lady said, Oh, I'm a poor seamstress, and I only have this one light. I was busy finishing my work, and I did not realize it was Diwali night. Hearing this, Lakshmi blessed her, for she 
had met a true devotee who did not think of pleasing the gods and instead went and did her duty. So Klaka, true happiness comes to those who are dedicated to their work. Just praying and lighting deeds alone will not bring you fortune and luck. So always work hard. Give your best to what you do. Honesty and dedication are the only deeds that will guide Lakshmi to you. Wow, that's a very meaningful message we learn from this book. Honesty and dedication are the true deeds that we should light up. Now, let us read some fun facts about the author and illustrator of this book. Bhakti Mathur lives in Hong Kong with her husband, their two sons, and their two dogs. She is a banker by profession. When not writing, working, or running after her boys, she is happiest curled up with a book and a hot cup of chai. Malshri Somani lives with her husband and son in Mumbai, India. She worked at Walt Disney and subsequently set up her own graphic design company. Malshri, Molly to her friends, loves to travel, and Florence is her favorite city. <laughs>